the needle rides over this cam, yeah. but then it has to go under the silver cam right there. And so the distance that that silver cam goes down is very important. When you say down, you mean between this surface... I will show you. ...and pointing you. perpendicular. That distance uh -huh. right there. Okay. And you'll notice it's about to the top of the rail, about an eighth of an inch. Very close. I could flip over and go to my sixteenths and thirty seconds, mm -hmm. which is what I do. But I'm showing you that it's about an eighth of an inch. Now, the one that's not working... Okay, watchers, I don't think it looked like an eighth of an inch to us because of the angle I've got the camera. Now, this is the one that's not working, and there's a difference between the distance here and the distance here. These are closer to this surface than those are. And you can so measure. this one's too high. In right, it's too high. But now let me show you what we're working with. If you loosen these two screws right here, all right, I've already loosened them, so now they're mm -hmm. really loose. Okay. But you'll notice it moves back and forth, so that's a placement. But this white piece right here is a cam. I'm going to move it so you can see there's a slot. Oh, it'll go up and down because it, of that. Because of that. So you loosen these two screws, and then you loosen this center screw. And then if we move this cam around, like I'm doing there, then it changes the critical height of the piece that we're looking at right there. So we have a working carriage, and right. you're going to base your adjustment on this non-working one on what is working. Okay, here I've made the adjustment on the bad one to show you that it's now four millimeters away from the top surface here to the surface top surface of that silver cam. And that's what our good one measured was also four millimeters. So now we go right here on the back and we want to snug. You notice I'm using a flat screwdriver on this cross point so that I know I'm not over torquing it. Ah, I wondered why you were doing that. Right, but now see I can get in there and now I've snugged it up so it cannot move. Then I'll come back with my little tiny cross point and tighten the, the center one. The center cam one so that now see this cannot move just in case the screw tries to turn the cam on us. And there we go. We're going to do the same thing on this side. And here, this is what I wanted to say earlier. There's a hole right here. Let me put the needle in it. There's a hole right there. And the position that hole is from side to side, see, we know these will slide. And so we go to our good one that we know is working and we've tested it. And we see where that hole position is. Looks to me like you can see the hole but it's all the way to the outside edge. Yeah, I mean, from plate. my vantage point, it's to the right side of the opening. Right, and this one is to the left side of the opening, but you can still see the hole. And mm -hmm. so that's how we're going to set this one exactly like that And, one. of course, every carriage, like every sewing machine and every piece of knitting is faintly unique. But That's right. But this now, is a great starting place. Let me explain the process. You watched us. We snug those with the flat tip. Then we tighten this up. Now we can go back and loosen these slightly with our flat tip because we didn't get them very tight. Now we can move it from side to and side. And I can see the hole is too far to the right of the slot or started out. You were now right. adjusting it, didn't it? Yes. Was that the case? That is the case. And now I will also want to show this. See, it'll tilt. Oh, yeah, look at that. Okay, so we're moving over, and we'll notice, you notice our little nylon cam is sliding in the slot so that we can now position this. This is a multitude of adjustments. It is. That's why they got me. But, yeah, we want to get it just in the right spot, and we want to keep it level. And you can, here, this is where we're leveling oh, look at these that. two sides. Right. All right, now it's a little too loose, so we snug, we snug, and if they're, not, check level. if they're not just right, which I think this one is a little closer than that one. Like lower? 
Yeah. Yeah, I would say so too. Okay. Up oh, there we go. The flat tip screwdriver. You can use it as a spacer. Goes in, and we just twist it slightly to go from side to side. So we're lined up here. We're the right height here, mm -hmm. and now we're level here, and we snug these guys with the flat tip. And then I'll come back with the big cross point and snug them up. With these particular sinker plates, you have to be very, very careful because these are adjustment screws, but if you bear down very hard without getting your finger up underneath them, you're going to bend. It and flexes these, quite a bit. Yeah, these were bent. And they were too close together here, and the other one was too. They have to be this distance on both ends. We've been looking at the way the lace carriage works and realizing that there are a lot of rather flexible parts, which leads us to believe that one jam from, say, choosing the wrong yarn or getting a snarl in it could cause it to fall out of adjustment. Is that Yes, it, it, it's one of those things that if it works fine and it doesn't have any problems knitting, then it'll stay pretty much like it is and a little silicon makes everything slide better. Mm -hmm. But, yes, this will flex and we saw this will get out of adjustment and you can pull them out of adjustment just as easily as you can loosen them, put them in, and tighten them back up again, because we're not going to put... I think dropping would probably do it too, wouldn't it? Yeah, shipping could do it. We're going to take some precautions. But the thing is, we're not going to tighten these screws down like we're trying to keep bears in a pen. We're just going to get them tight. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, if, if something got in here, just like I did with my screwdriver, and pulled through, sure. it might tip it. So those are the adjustments that we found on this uh, particular sinker plate and what we did find is there's very little adjustment in this lace carriage. The carriage itself is quite simple. Very simple. Two paths, one or the other. There's some things that'll stick, flippers and spring loads, but most of the meticulous adjustments are here on this sinker plate. That's why we're trying to pass this on. A knitting friend said he's having a problem. All right. I found several things instantly. One of them is this has a very unusual floating yarn guide that you don't see anywhere else. And of course this is what we call a trolley wheel setup. And you can see that it rides along that rail, but it's trapped because the lower trolley wheel is also riding a rail. This one came in out of adjustment, so this lower wheel wasn't here it was under it which of course is totally misaligned it'll never work yeah. and it wasn't it was it was breaking not, needles it was breaking needles i'm sure it wasn't knitting worth a flip because the reason this floats is so that your yarn is always in the right spot to mm -hmm. go between needles so what we had to do was uh loosen this loosen this and then there's some adjustment underneath here and you wouldn't think it, but it's this screw and this screw that lets this part of the track move to line up so that when these are all there. And if you'll see, I don't know if the camera can see, there's not much, but that little top washer riding that. Yeah, we can see. And you see, you've got enough play in it that it would Oh, it could flex right off if it something... Just mildly pressure some occur. If this piece moved that way, then this roller would come off. And that's exactly what happened. I had to loosen these, line it up, and then pull this rail away. And no wonder this poor lady front. was learning yeah. new and bad words. <laughs> <laughs> I think she might have been making some up. I would have too. see emerging in our knitting. A lace pattern? Yeah, a lace pattern. And it looks a whole lot like the pattern that you have punched in that card. Awesome! And, and it's doing it consistently from side to side. What we found is that the adjustments have to be made according to 
the carriage and the bed that you're working on slightly. Uh, we did a video on how to make the adjustments on the carriage, and I matched them to one we knew was working. We brought it up, and it was working. This one was doing something, and we'll talk about it here. It was lifting the needle, moving the needle, but it wasn't transferring the stitch like it should have. And I looked at it, and there is a timing to these lace carriages. And, of course, again, we're going to reiterate that everything is done in the sinker plate, not in the carriage. So if you have that problem, you see the needle come up, it moves over, but when it, the carriage Let passes... Let me see it, if I can stop it. There's one coming up. Okay, all right, let's move in and see right there. All right, there's the needle coming up. Now, the thing is, when it drops back down, it has to drop down on the other side of the needle that's going to get the stitch. There it is, right there. See, it has crossed the needle behind yeah, it. Yeah, let me try it. to find a tool. And there's the needle that will receive the stitch that I'm tapping. That's right. And, and the here's one that, the one that's dropping the stitch. Right. So when it dropped down, it dropped on the leading edge of the needle that's going to get the stitch. And let's go on. And that's the timing for your lace carriage. And that is done with the same two devices that we showed you in our adjustment video. I matched them up to the one that was working, but... It wasn't quite right for this sinker plate. So you have to watch, just like we did, is the needle dropping behind the one that receives the stitch. And what if it drops before that, then it doesn't make the stitch. And we will show you in another video how that adjustment is made. Ooh, look at that. That's just what we wanted. That isn't is it? exactly it. All right, here we are talking about adjustment. We explained in the, another video to loosen those screws, loose, loosen the center screw, and adjust the cam. And that is the height of this leader cam right here, up and down towards the needle bed. Now, what we found out in testing is that, and we talked about the position of this hole in its little keyway slot. This is the one that Catherine's been using on her bed. So I adjusted the one that I just got through working on, which had a number of problems. But when it came to adjustment, I adjusted it just like this one. What we found out is when you get it on the bed, and I will show you, this is the cam that we adjust with the screws just being pointed out. Here's the needle. You see the needle, the one that comes forward. It comes over here, and if you'll notice, it stops when it gets to that timing cam. So in order for it to proceed on, this cam is pushing it down. So the minute it gets to the end here is when it's going to pop down. And so the position of this cam and the pressure that this puts on it tells that needle when to drop down. It must cross the needle that's going to receive the stitch. We have a test video in which we actually show you where the needle position is before and after this cam engagement, and it should drop down here on crossing the needle that receives the stitch. So if it doesn't, and Catherine mentioned it could be a drop stitch or no stitch at all, this is where you make the adjustments. You loosen these screws, you move the eyelet that way to make it drop faster. You move the little hole this way towards the inside to make it drop slower. So you look at it and you see, is it dropping too soon or is it dropping too late? This particular one that I've been working on dropped too late. It was behind the needle that it was supposed to be crossing. So we move this cam to the outside of the sinker plate and that made it drop sooner because if you look at the curve in this cam, you see, this is where it's putting pressure on it, and this is when it gets to the end. It has to have so much pressure to make it pop down quickly. So this is what times when the needle drops, and that gives you a way to troubleshoot on the bed that you're working on. All the beds should be the same.
they're the same gauge, the same needle spacing, but you actually really need to have the sinker plate on the bed you're going to work with so you can see what the needles are doing. See, we had it working just fine on this side, but not on that side. So we, by watching what the needles were doing, I was able to adjust this timing cam to make it work. So what he's saying, I think, is after you have made what look like sensible adjustments, you still may need to observe very carefully what's happening as it crosses the needle bed and tweak them slightly. That's right. You have to have it on the bed so you can see what the needles are actually doing. You can set it to what looks right, but it yeah. all depends on what the needle's doing and right. when. The customer's carriage that we've been testing is an LC2 Silver Reed. Just to be safe, we decided to put her sinker plate on my much older carriage. They are the same design, but this one's labeled Studio 360-260. And we thought it would be interesting to see, will this sinker plate still make the transfers correctly attached to an alternate carriage? We've already tried it the other way around, and it did work using my sinker plate, not pictured here, on her carriage. And once again, I see that strange phenomenon taking place. There is a lace pattern coming out that looks remarkably like the car. Oh, this is such good news. Yes. And what we want to talk about is, we've done this in two stages. I did some adjustments and we filmed that, and now we're doing a test video. But it's all part of the same video, and I got my operations confused. I said in another video, in this video, but another part of it. Look at that. Oh, well, that's just what we were hoping for. That's what it's Let's supposed to Let's show them the car. Okay. This is one I made up. Before we call it a day, we're going to test what the manual calls fashion lace using this card. This is the regular lace setting. Notice what happens back here when I go to fashion lace. It moves that, which affects the way the rows are counted. So you begin fashion lace with the carriage on the right side and two or any number of numbers that are not banded in red. If you make up your own card, you're going to have to get creative about this, but the purchased cards, they already thought this out for you, which rows knit and transfer. So on the white background rows, with this setting, everything stays on the triangle setting back here. We just knit two plain rows for this point on this card. It may be another number of rows. Now, switching to fashion lace and removing the yarn from the yarn feeder, which is terrifying, we knit until the card is finished with the red banded numbers. Let me make sure that my yarn is freed. And what should be happening here is only transfers and set up for the other rows. It shouldn't drop stitches because we don't have any yarn because it's not expecting to knit. Phew! It worked. So now I'll thread the yarn back in. And I've got to watch my card because you can see this time I need to knit four rows. Yarn is back in. Back to this setting for the four rows that have the white background. One, two, three, four. All is well. Now I have come to, looks like six rows with red background. So again, I will remove my yarn from the feeder and switch over to this setting. Time to knit two rows on this setting. 
I'll thread the yarn back in and get back to work. And there we go. Fashion lace is working just fine. It is slower than normal lace, but it's quite nice.